is THV 11. Welcome back to the Sea Block today. Everyone's favorite bird expert, Sarah Baxter, back with us. Yeah, she's with the Game and Fish Commission and is here to tell us about this week's Bird of the Week. Sarah. And she's got. Hello. This is this the Eastern guy. Kingbird. Okay, kingbird. the Eastern yeah. Kingbird. So this bird is a member of the flycatcher family. Um, and there are several different kingbirds. And um, they get that name, the kingbird, because they're very, very aggressive and territorial. Okay. Hmm. So they're, and they're, like I said, there are several different ones, the eastern, and there also is a western kingbird. Despite this bird's name, it can be found all the way from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. They just don't have them down in far southwestern United States. Okay. And, and you said one way you can see them is by their, their tail. Yeah, so these guys are easy to identify um, because they have this white, band across the bottom of the tail. They're the only bird that we have that has that marking. Hmm. And these guys are just arriving in good numbers from Central and South America, like many of our migrants. And uh, I just got my first one of the year yesterday. I've been on the lookout. So they're, oh, really? they're starting to get here, yes. And you can identify them also because they have a black head, black neck, black back, and then a very contrasting white underparts. I see. Um, what they kind of look like to me, the Phoebe. They do, very good, yeah. And that's because a Phoebe is also a flycatcher. And wow. they kind of also have that crest on their head um, and so the way and the way that these guys hunt is also part of the how they get the flycatcher name mm -hmm. um, they sit on one perch they like open areas so like barbed wire fences along pastures and things like that are really easy, good places to look and they perch in one little spot and they just make little circular flights and they go out and they grab a bug and they bring it back and they beat it till it's not moving anymore and oh. they eat it. <laughs> and wild. they'll King always bird. go back to the exact same spot on that perch. Um, and if they're not on a barbed wire fence, they'll like to sit on the very, very, very tippy, tippy, tippy end of a branch on a low tree or a bush. And is there a way that you can attract them? Not really. These guys good. are going to go where they want to go. They're not coming to a feeder. Oh. <laughs> uh, if you've got good habitat in your area, then they might come and visit you. Um, they like areas near water and forest edges. And the reason they like areas near water is because if you're hunting in the air and you're moving fast, you want to make sure you're not going to crash into anything. So hunting over water is really mm. good for that. You're not going to hit it. They might get a spicy bug and you have to get a drink <laughs> that's, to wash Oh, that's it down, true. You know. Good thought there. Okay, so what kind of sound do they, would they make? Um, it, they don't have a real easy to identify song for like the average person. Um, they make a lot of chip calls and things like that and real high pitch. They talk a lot amongst each other. You know, they communicate ver verbally. Yeah. They communicate hey, hey, with Bob, sound how a are lot. you? How was that yeah. dragonfly? <laughs> exactly. Oh, it was fine. It was great. Yeah. They nest, they make an yeah. open cup nest, um, usually on the east side of a tree to help with afternoon sun, help keep okay. it cool. So right now, it's mostly males getting here and um, setting up territories, and, and then the females will be along very okay. shortly, and they'll mate up. And these guys are a little unusual. A lot of our songbirds that breed here will have two to three clutches, or sets of young. These guys only have just one every oh, year. Okay. They're pretty um, demanding, I guess. Okay. Hmm. So they're, they're different from uh, the Phoebe in that they will not nest underneath your house on a deck or something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. No, kingbirds aren't going to nest on your porch. Okay. <laughs> and porch. you said that you can find a lot of them here in downtown Little Rock. You can, yeah. Go to the Clinton Library and they're out there on that lawn. Um, they really like all those Bradford pear trees. You know, they use them yeah, as perches. Yeah. They're not good food sources, but they are good perches. Um, so downtown or city parks, any place with open areas, golf courses, Things like that. Now, do they eat mosquitoes? Uh, mostly big bugs. Big they bugs. like beetles and butterflies and stuff like that. Well, maybe we could import a few birds that would eat the mosquitoes by the Arkansas. <laughs> but not. Okay. Oh, you're over here. Sorry, right. I'm talking to the wrong camera. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> That's going to do it. Thanks so much. Yes, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Baxter with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. That's going to wrap it up for yeah, us today. It is. Remember, the news is always on THV11.com. See you tomorrow.